Good morning. Welcome to the Eureka Springs First United Methodist Church. It's a beautiful fall day here. I hope it's beautiful wherever you are. We are so pleased to have you join our worship service today. This service can be followed on whoa, Facebook. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. We've got to stop you. Really? We've got to speed things up. It's time to start making chili. So, <laughs> do you have your chili going out? I now, I want know. to talk to you very quickly about our chili cook-off. Two weeks from today, uh, Sunday, February 14th at 5 o'clock. This is going to be really exciting. I've got some little updates for it to make it more exciting. First off, uh, very simple. Uh, you make your chili, put it in something. We ask you if you've got a crock pot or something to keep it warm. Uh, bring it to where it's hot. We need all chili checked in by 515. There's absolutely no cost in this whatsoever. We're going to have Fritos, onions, cornbread, cheese, all, all of the good things to, to, to help your chili. It uh, doesn't matter the variety, whether you make green chili, uh, white chili, uh, pork chili, we don't care. We all know where Blake has been, so I figure he's going to make marinara so he doesn't stand a chance in the con competition, but that's okay. But uh, we're going to have great fun. We're going to have great entertainment. Uh, Rachel Fields is going to be here. Larry's going to be with her as well, and uh, we'll take up a, a, lop, a love offering for them, and it's going to be a great time. And then the prizes. So why do you want to make chili? Uh, instead of just coming to eat because you want to win the prize. I first thought we could grab some coffee mugs or we could get some aprons, but instead I called a few favors. Uh, Nick and Garnet from Nibbles has given us a gift certificate. Uh, Catherine Zeller has given us a gift certificate from Cafe Amores. And then uh, Rodney and Autumn Slain have given us a gift certificate for the grotto. So it's worth coming out, entering this thing, have a lot of fun, eat some good chili, listen to music, and win a good prize. So thanks. If those of you don't know this gentleman, he is our director of music. And tell, I'm telling you, he's multi-talented, as you just heard. This service can be followed on Facebook or YouTube. Please share with others what you see and what you hear and what you like about our service. To find out the latest happenings here at our church, go to lovespokenhere.org and you will can download our bulletin. You can see what missions are going on, and we'd love to have you be part of all that. Following the service today, there will be a drive through communion uh, under our portico outside, so I hope to see you all there. May today's message and music be spiritual and inspirational for all. Let us begin our worship service. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we can. Good morning. Sometimes when we're quiet enough, we may hear that still small voice. Forgiving yourself, a necessary daily practice. As I forgive, so must you. And that includes forgiving yourself, not letting grievances against yourself stack up to torment you. That is not my way. That is not my desire for you to navigate life with guilt on your back, sucking the life out of you. My forgiveness frees and wipes the slate clean. Do the same for yourself. Let forgiveness reign. Forgiveness for others, forgiveness for yourself. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your great love, your tender mercy, and your forgiveness. Sometimes we sit around and condemn ourselves, forgetting where we are in the new covenant of grace. Help us to live in the reality of the clean slate that you have given us through Christ. 
Help us to extend forgiveness to others, all others, as you do, and Lord, to ourselves as well. Sometimes that is the hardest of all. Through Christ we pray, as he prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. We're glad that you're worshiping and with us today, wherever you are. It's a great day. It's a joyful day. So let's worship together. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with so joy round thee. And heavenly flick thy rays Stars and angels sing around thee Center of unbroken praise Field and forest, hill and mountain Flowery meadow, flashing sea Chanting bird and flowing mountain Call us to rejoice in thee Forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Well, spring of thy joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou, our Father, Christ, our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to thy joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. A divine is reigning o'er us, binding all within its span. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of love. When my Jesus washed When Jesus washed He washed my sins away Oh, happy day now Now, wherever you are at home You know this song is easy So clap your hands and join us Oh, happy day Happy day when Jesus washed, when my Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day now, oh, happy day. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. Nobody there gonna toss me out. Walking with the Father, talking to the Son, praying with the Spirit. But they're the three and one. Oh, happy day! Oh, happy day! Whoa. 
washed when my Jesus washed when Jesus washed he washed my sins away oh happy day he taught me how to watch watch fight and pray fight and pray and live rejoicing every day every day oh happy day oh happy day when Jesus was when my Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, He washed my sins away. Oh, happy day now! It's a happy day. It's a happy day. Oh, happy, oh, happy day. The scripture reading today that is according to the Common English Bible comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It won't be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. They broke that covenant with me even though I was their husband, declares the Lord. No, this is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my instructions within them and engrave them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. They will no longer need to teach each other to say, Know the Lord. Because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sins. Thanks be to God for the gift of the scriptures. Thanks be to God. Today's Halloween. Tomorrow marks All Saints Day. And of course, we will celebrate it next Sunday. Very excited about that. But thinking about Halloween, it's kind of a mark of the beginning of winter. And when I reflect back on this past year, year and a half, I think we've lived about a year and a half worth of winter already. And um, I'm just kind of tired of it. I'm tired of, of friends and people that I know that are sick and dealing with issues. I'm tired of people that I know and acquaintances that I know that are dying, not just from COVID, but just from so many things. It's just been such a challenging time. I've done this song last year once, but it, it just seems appropriate right now as we go into a new season and think about what life ultimately the new season offers us. The timeless theme, earth and heaven will pass away. It's not a dream. God will make all things new that day. God is the curse from which I stumbled and fell. Evil has vanished to eternal hell. No more night. No more pain, no more 
tears never crying again and praises to Thank you, Bryn. That was beautiful. Heavenly Father, may the thoughts in my mind, the feelings in my heart, and the words from my mouth be pleasing to you, O Lord. What do you think about when you look at this book, the Holy Bible? Do you see a book on a coffee table? placed there to identify the occupants of that house as Christians when a visitor comes? Is it the book you carry to church every Sunday? Or to the Bible study on Wednesday night, and then it goes back on the shelf? Folks, I see this book, the Bible, as a record of living history. I love history, and this book fits that passion. Some simply refer to it as God's Word. Do most people understand that the full Bible has been printed 
in at least 704 different languages. That doesn't include the multiple language printings of just the New Testament. More than 5 billion, and that's with a B, copies of the Bible have been printed. But do people really realize that this book is our past history, our present day-to-day history and happenings, and our future history? God created the world millennia ago, and he's still creating everyone and everything in it. We can learn and understand so much if we only spend some time reading this book. I want to share today some thoughts about covenants. This is a word found many times in this book with some profound meanings. Webster defines the word covenant as, quote, a usually formal, solemn, and binding agreement, a written agreement or promise, usually under seal between two or more parties, especially for the performance of some action. I'm pretty sure that most of you have entered into some form of a covenant in your lifetime. Marriage is a form of a covenant. Maybe there was a covenant clause in the paperwork when you purchased your home or when you bought that piece of land that you built your home on. Was there a covenant involved when Holiday Island became a recognized entity? Currently, I am a notary, and I often notarize rental leases for homes. Each time the leasee is asked to read through the agreement, I am amazed at how fast people read before signing. Does that individual realize that this is a binding agreement into which he or she is entering, that person is being held responsible by signing that agreement. Our Lord stresses covenants throughout the Bible, pointing out how binding and committal a covenant can be, and also reminding us of the consequences if that pact or agreement is not followed. Theologians tend to disagree on the number of covenants in the Holy Bible. Are there three? Are there six? Are there seven? It seems to me that there are numerous covenants mentioned in this book. But we're just going to touch on the most familiar ones. When we see a rainbow, we think about Noah. In Genesis chapter 6, God instructed Noah to build an ark so that Noah, his family, and two of every living creature on earth at that time could be saved from the flood. Following the flood, in Genesis chapter 9, God created the rainbow as a sign of his covenant that never again would he use the waters to destroy the earth. In Genesis chapter 12, God promised Abraham that he and his descendants would be made into a great nation. The great one took a ragtag group of shepherds or herdsmen and declared them to be his chosen people. An agreement was established whereby these chosen people would inherit a wonderful land in which they would live forever, as long as they were faithful and obedient to God. There was also the covenant God made with the Israelites as he led them out of Egypt. In Exodus, we learn about the Mosaic covenant. Moses was to lead the Israelites to Canaan. 
Then there is the Davidic covenant. God chose David to be a great leader, a king. But the most important fact to remember is that there would be a royal descendant of Abraham through David, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, folks, that's a covenant. God doesn't make these covenants willy-nilly. The scripture that Karen read this morning was from Jeremiah chapter 31. When he was a very young man in Judah, God chose Jeremiah as a priest and a prophet, and he was empowered with the wisdom to foresee the future of Israel. He had the voice to warn of the destruction that would befall Israel, but most of the people failed to listen to him. This was heartbreaking to Jeremiah, and he wept for his people. Thus, he became identified as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah lived during the tumultuous period of time when Israel was overtaken by Babylonia, the exile years. Can you imagine the complaining and the gnashing of teeth that were happening? How quickly the Israelites blamed our God for their predicament. And how easily they forgot their faithfulness and obedience to God. And yet, in their weakest moments, when they would finally confess and pray for help, God would always forgive them and pull them through. God decided that the time had come when he would set up a new covenant with the Israelites, one that maybe they wouldn't forget as easily, one that he would place on the people's hearts and in their minds, a constant reminder of who they were and that through renewed faith and obedience, they would receive forgiveness and guidance. That ancient covenant remains on our hearts today. We get into all kinds of scrapes and messes. We face all sorts of storms and temptations in our lives. Physical, emotional, and spiritual storms. When we tend to stray from our basic faith principles. But if we remember we are God's children and pray to him and be more faithful and obedient, God will help us become stronger in our faith and wiser in our actions. I'm not sure that there is a modern prophet in my life, but I do know that I have a helper, the Holy Spirit who was sent to keep me straight. And yes, I admit, I am a challenge. Even though I don't always express it out loud, I question so many things. Sometimes I act too quickly, and sometimes, to the discouragement of others, I act too slowly. But I know where to ask for direction. The Lord placed his covenant on my heart and in my mind so that I would be a dutiful daughter. During a busy day, I often fail to obey. Oh boy, do I fail. But in the quiet of an evening, God touches my heart And I know I need to do better tomorrow. My God, my Father in heaven, gives me another chance, a whole new day. Just as he continually forgave the Israelites for their disobedience for countless years, I receive his grace and mercy. Something I'm truly humbled 
to receive. That covenant has been written on your hearts too and in your minds. In this high-tech world in which we live, I'm required to have passwords to protect my security for practically everything I do. Almost every time I need to set up a new password, I carefully enter something creative and then a message comes back that this password is already in use. Who knows this? And if this mystery source is so intelligent, why doesn't it just set up a new password for me? In reality, there are only two passwords that we need to remember. Jesus Christ and love. These are the keys to God's kingdom. The keys to obeying the covenant of God that he laid on our hearts and in our minds. God is forever. God never reneges on the promises he makes to his children. There are many jokes about God's keeping a scorecard for each of us noting how many times we go awry. There are probably even more references to St. Peter waiting at heaven's gate with a long list of questions of our misdeeds. What I like to dream is that if there is such a list with my name on it, a line has been drawn through most of my mistakes because God knows I tried to do right. I tried to right those wrongdoings and he knows what's really in my heart and in my mind. My prayer is that same judgment for each of you. May we pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day Help us remember the ancient covenants that still impact our lives today. Bless each one here as we go about doing your will on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. receive the benediction go in peace and make the good Lord bless and keep you may the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet till we meet again